We are going to look next at doing a five point perspective drawing on an interior of a room. This one can get complicated super duper quickly. Therefore, I'm gonna to try to use a pencil so I can erase some lines. So it hopefully makes a little bit more sense. Anytime I would do this on my own, I would generally use a pencil, but I've used a Sharpie in the past so that my lines are a little bit more bold. Here is an example of what you're able to do with five point perspective. Draw a bedroom. Okay, so we're gonna do something very similar to that, but a little bit more basic. First thing with a five point perspective drawing, you have five points that are vanishing. So you have the first ones up here where the lines converge. The second one is down here where the lines converge. We have on the left and on the right. And then the last one is in the center, right there. Okay, so to start with the room, we want to make the back wall. A lot of artists recommend starting from the very front and working your way back. A lot of artists recommend doing the basic of the room, the basic shape, and then adding on to that. Um, that is how I'm going to do it today. Once you get more skilled at this, you can probably start with what's closest to you and work your way back. Okay, so I'm gonna draw the back wall to begin with. Houses are shaped all types of different ways, rooms especially. So there's really no correct or incorrect way to do this, just different. Okay, so we're gonna do some nice high ceilings on this one. So all I did was make a rectangular shape using the guides with this grid. You do not have to do something that has the exact same lines. You can make a line right here and just follow the basic lines on the sides. Um, it does not have to be tracing over a previously drawn line. Okay, so then to make the room, we're gonna go from the vanishing point to each of the four corners, and then we're gonna go out using our ruler. So I'm gonna go at my vanishing point, go to the corner and go out. I'm gonna continue doing that. So I have my basic room. I'm gonna add a window. So I'm gonna do the base of my window. I'm gonna do an arched window. So I'm gonna go up. And then I'm gonna arch it up here. Okay, I'm gonna add center piece. Okay. You could continue the perspective if you would like to and draw something out here using that same vanishing point. If you find a way to do it, it could be pretty cool. Okay, so then now we're going to start working on our objects that are in this room. We're going to do a super basic couch. Um, so to do the super basic couch, we're going to do kind of a rectangle for the bottom. We're going to follow the guidelines and then we're going to do this little rectangle from the top and we're going to angle it over. Okay, so right now if you saw this, it would look like this was painted on the wall. Now we're going to add the shape to it. So I'm going to go from the vanishing point to all my main corners on here and then I'm going to go out. So I'm going to start at the top, vanishing point to that corner, and then I come out. Oops. The pencil sharp is sharpened funny, so it's looking a little weird. Here to here. Ironically, those are ending up on almost the same spots, which is telling me that you wouldn't actually be able to see the top there. Go from here to this point to now. 
from here to that point, and then out, and then from here to this point, and out. Okay, so I'm going to erase a little bit so it hopefully makes a little more sense. Okay, so as you can see, we have the back of our couch here. We have the seat of the couch right here. And then we have where our legs go right here. Um, right now it looks like the couch goes on forever, which we don't really necessarily need. Um, so we need to end the couch, but we can't end it with parallel lines like we do with most other perspective. We need to follow the curvature of the lines that are already there. So we're gonna end it right here. So we're gonna follow this curve right here and that matches this one. Again, the curves are different, but these two lines correlate together. Okay, then we're gonna go across right here. And because of the way this is drawn, it kind of dips down. And then we're gonna come down here Okay, and then we want to show that that is three dimensional, so we need to see the edge over here. So we'll go over. This is going to go back a little ways, it's going to go with that curve. And then come down. We have the couch. You could add some decorations if you wanted pillows, blankets. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is put a TV on the wall. So I'm going to do, we're going to make a big TV, not too big. So make a line right here where I want my TV to start. And then the top of it is so gonna go away from the vanishing point. So be like that. The bottom of it is gonna go away from the vanishing point. So go like that. Okay. Then the edge of the TV, follow the guide for the curves right there. make a little window for the TV, a little border. Um, this necessarily doesn't have to be a TV. This would also be the same way you would make a window on the side, be the same way that you would make a picture frame. Maybe do a light up here. Uh, last thing we're gonna do is we'll add a little rug. So I'm gonna have the rug coming out from under the couch. I want the lines to match, to have the same curvature as the lines that are already there. This side goes to the vanishing point. Since I already have this line, I don't have to worry about it. This side goes to the vanishing point. And then it's gonna end right there. If you wanna do fringes coming off the rug, they would each go to the vanishing point. Could do both sides at once, go a little quicker. All right, and that is my interior.